In this lesson, we're going to focus on projectile motion in two dimensions. And we're going to derive these two equations here. Now, the first one gives us the maximum height of a projectile during its flight time, where V is the speed of the projectile, theta is the angle to the horizontal, and G is the acceleration due to gravity. This equation down here gives us the range of the projectile. Now, before we can derive these two equations, there are two assumptions we need to make. First, we're going to assume that air resistance plays no role in the motion of our projectile. So these equations only work when our projectile's velocity is relatively low and when the projectile is not spinning. If we did have air resistance in our model, then our projectile would experience a deceleration along the x-axis. And secondly, we're going to assume that the freefall acceleration is constant over the entire range of flights. So in other words, the direction of G doesn't change along the entire range of flight. In other words, the acceleration vector is always pointing down and at 90 degrees to the horizontal. This can only be the case if we work at short ranges where the curvature of the Earth is negligible. So you can see here that if our projectile is fired at a very high velocity and travels far enough that the curvature of the Earth becomes a factor in its flight, you see that the direction of G will change over the course of the flight. And we're assuming in our scenario here that the range isn't large enough. So if we have a closer look at our projectile's velocity vector. Our velocity vector can be separated into its X and Y component vectors. And these component vectors can be studied in isolation from one another. So if we have a look at the X or horizontal component first, from trigonometry, we know that the X component of the VI vector is equal to VI cosine theta I. And this gives us the velocity of the vector along the X axis. In a previous lesson, we derived the equations of motion, and we can use one of these now to find the displacement of the projectile along the X axis over time. So this equation was the final displacement is equal to the initial displacement plus the initial velocity multiplied by time, plus half the acceleration along the x-axis multiplied by time squared. Because we're not looking at air resistance in our example here, we don't have an acceleration along the x-axis, so we can ignore this term. We also know that the initial position of our projectile is at zero. So this xi here will equal zero. So our final position is equal to the initial velocity multiplied by time. And vx here is the initial velocity. So we got a value of x, the displacement at any point in time is equal to the speed of the projectile cosine theta multiplied by time. And we'll come back to this equation a bit later. Now we can focus on the y component of the projectile's velocity. And using trigonometry again, we know that the opposite length of a right angled triangle is equal to vi sine theta. So if we just focus now on the y component of our projectile, we know that the velocity of the y component is going to start off at vi sine theta, but as it reaches its max height up here, the velocity will fall to zero because it's not climbing any higher. 
So if we look at another equation of motion, we've got v, the velocity in the y direction, is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction, plus the acceleration in the y direction multiplied by time. We can use this equation here to find out the time it takes for our projectile to reach the maximum height. We know at the maximum height that the velocity of our projectile is zero. So this here is the final velocity. And it's equal to our initial velocity in the y direction, which is vi sine theta. And our acceleration in the y direction is g, which points downwards. So g is negative. And because we've fixed our final velocity to be zero, because this equation represents the projectile's maximum height, we can represent our time as being time max, which is the maximum time it takes for the projectile to reach the peak. So we can rearrange this to make time the subject of our equation, which equals minus v i sine theta i divided by minus g. And these minus terms can cancel out. What we can do now is use another equation of motion, very similar to this, but in the y direction, to find the height travelled with respect to time. So we can say y max is equal to the initial position of the projectile, which is at zero, plus the initial velocity in the y direction, vi sine theta, multiplied by time, minus the acceleration due to gravity, or half the acceleration due to gravity, multiplied by time squared. And these times are the t max time here, because we're only interested in the time it takes for the projectile to reach the maximum height here. So we can substitute the right hand of the equation here into this equation here. So our maximum height is equal to vi sine theta multiplied by vi sine theta divided by the acceleration due to gravity minus half of g multiplied by this term squared. So vi squared sine squared theta over g squared. Now we can simplify this now to get this equation up here. We can multiply the velocities together to get vi squared, multiply the sines together to get sine squared theta, and this is divided by g. And simplifying this term here, we have vi squared sine squared theta multiplied by g divided by 2g squared. We can cancel out one of the g's at the bottom here. So I can remove this squared and remove this g here. And essentially what we have is a subtraction of two fractions. For example, 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 is equal to 1 over 2. So this equation here is equal to vi squared sine squared theta over 2g which is our original equation up here. So how do we get the range? What do we need to do?
Well, we know that the time it takes the projectile to reach the maximum height takes the time of t max, which is this expression here. But to complete its flight, it takes twice as long. Because when it's at its maximum height, it's only halfway through its flight. So we know that it takes twice the amount of t max to reach the end of its flight. In other words, the full range. So we can use this equation up here to find the maximum range when our t value here is equal to twice the amount of t max. So the range is equal to vi cosine theta, vi cosine theta i, multiplied by twice the t max, multiplied by two times t max, and that is equal to vi cosine theta i multiplied by two vi sine theta divided by g. This equals vi squared, or 2vi squared, cosine theta i, sine theta i, all over g. And in this equation here, we've got a trigonometric identity. And this trigonometric identity is sine 2 theta, which is equal to 2 co cosine theta sine theta. So we can replace the 2 cosine theta sine theta with sine 2 theta, which gives us vi squared sine 2 theta divided by g, which is our equation up here, which gives us our maximum range.